Hi. Hi, everybody. I know probably nobody is going to see this. I didn't advertise live again. Um, I'm going to try to be more consistent about it. If you come in, please say hello and, you know, interact a little bit. First, I want to start off saying I'm so happy that it is spring. Uh, we're finally getting to the point where all of our snow on our property is melting and we're able to go outside. It's a little muddy, but not too bad because it hasn't rained that much yet and really enjoy some of the early sprouts that are just coming up and especially in my garden. I think some of them were hiding under the snow because I went out there and um, one of my little rose bushes, my mini rose bushes, is already green. It's like it uncovered and it was ready to, to go. It was pretty kind of cool. So today I want to talk to you about a subject that I am um, talking to my students in my herbal program about this coming Saturday and something that we discussed um, during this last session. And it's how to determ determine the quality of an herb. And by that, I mean when you're dealing with dried herbs, okay? Obviously, if you're going out wildcrafting or you're growing your own, hopefully the quality is good when you're wildcrafting. There's certain things you need to uh, make sure that you're doing. And I can cover those in a different um, live. But when you have to purchase herbs, and that happens sometimes, you know, I, like I'm going to give you an example, chamomile. I grow chamomile here, but I don't grow enough to get us through an entire year before it flowers again. So I had to purchase chamomile. Now, when you purchase, you want to make sure that you're purchasing from a reputable company. And there are several out there. Um, Mountain Rose Herbs is a really good one. Another one is uh, Star, uh, yeah, Star West Botanicals is fairly good. And then Frontier is another decent one. Now, just because I'm recommending those <clears throat> or say, oh, you know, th those are generally good doesn't mean they're always good. Some of the herbs that I've gotten from the last two in particular have not been super high quality. And this is why I'm giving this talk because I want you to be able to tell what is good and what isn't when you receive it. The first most important thing is if you are, um, if you purchased a flower, then you better get flowers, right? You don't want a bunch of stems. It, if, you, if you just came in, I see someone just came in, say hello, I don't, I don't know who you are, I'm not peeking at names. Um, so when I ordered chamomile, I wanna make sure there are going to be occasional stems, right? Okay, so I've got a stem right here. That should be occasional. It should not be your entire jar or bag that you get full of stems. It should primarily be the part that you ordered. If you ordered leaves, there are probably gonna be some stems, right? But they, there shouldn't be a lot. It should be primarily the leaf. That's what you ordered. Um, that goes with all parts of the plant. Now, some herbs you order, it's the whole um, herb, the whole top part. And so it will include the stem, the leaf, and sometimes even the flower. So understand what you're ordering so that you don't complain and go, oh, I got you know, a bunch of stems. Like, well, that's because that's also a medicinal part of that particular herb. And there are a lot of um, <clears throat> herbs that you can look at. And when you're ordering them, understand what part is usable so that, that you know what you're, you're expecting. The other thing to really look at is how do they package their herbs? Okay, if, are you looking at mylar bar bags? Because those are a good way to store herbs. If you're ordering from uh, somebody and they package in um, plastic, that is not a good way to store herbs. I wouldn't even order from a company that packaged their stuff in plastic. So don't do that. <clears throat> I'm gonna show you an example of something. I actually harvested this hyssop this last summer and I did it very quickly. We were at the end of the season and I just chopped it down really, really fast. And I actually did keep the stems, even though, um, you know, they're usable-ish, but they're not ones that I would use. And so I have actually a ton of stems in here and I just would, I'm actually going to remove all these stems so that I can get to the, the herb down at the bottom of the jar. So just, just know that, you know, get, get the part that you're looking for. Now, if you are harvesting and wildcrafting your own, the best way to um, maintain the quality of your herbs is to not break them down to their smallest parts. So let's talk about that. If you get powdered herbs, those are going to start losing 
potency and flavor and everything within probably three to six months. If you um, are keeping it as a whole leaf, well, look, nope, there's cut and sifted. So then cut and sifted, that's going to start losing potency between six and 12 months. Now, it doesn't mean they're not potent at all, but they're going to become less potent. And you'll be able to tell from a couple other things that we'll talk about in a minute. But um, so that cut and sifted is going to break down faster. Whole leaf or whole flower can last a little bit longer, generally. If you're getting into root slices or root you know, chunks or um, bark pieces, things that aren't super, super small, those are going to last longer. So when you're doing wildcrafting or when you're doing your own harvesting, don't break down the herb to its smallest piece. Try to keep it as whole as possible until you're going to use it and it will last longer for you. Additionally, if you're storing it in airtight containers, jars with good lids, and then out of the sunlight and also out of fluctuating temperatures. You do not want to store your herbs in a garage, okay, where part of the day or even part of the year it's really hot and part of the year it's really cold. Then you're going to lose potency and flavor and everything a whole lot faster. So find a spot in your house that you can store, like I store my herbs right here. The windows are on this side but they never directly point at my herbs. So there's never any direct sunlight. This room stays pretty much, um, you know, around 60 to 70 degrees almost all the time. This is one of our most modulated, is that, that right? Anyway, modulated rooms, the room that stays the, the most consistent. So I, that's part of the reason why I chose this. And also because I was keeping them in my pantry and it took up all the space. So, cause I've got herbs here and I've got herbs <laughs> over there. Um, so anyway, the other, the other thing is when you receive it after checking to make sure you got the right part and that it's not massively filled with stems or other things that you didn't order or debris. I mean, I've heard of some people getting rocks, um, insects, things like that. That, it, that's not going to be good. If you have any of that, you need to return it to the person that you bought it from and, you know, demand a refund. And I don't know that I would ever order from them again. Um, but the next thing you do is when you open the bag, smell it. Smell to make sure that it's, it's you know, potent and it, it has that nice, um, that, that really good scent. It should smell like the flower or smell like the leaves. When you, when you smash or you smell um, peppermint, it should, should smell very pepperminty. And the same thing with chamomile flowers or lavender. Um, lavender you have to be careful with. There's different types of lavender you can get and um, some of them are usable only in cosmetics and some of them are usable as um, food and tea. So, you know, be aware when you're purchasing. Also, if you want to know the actual date of um, packaging and processing, then usually the bags will have lot numbers. The only way though to really get specific information about that is generally to call the manufacturer, tell them the lot number, and then they'll tell you um, when it was uh, processed and packaged so that you at least can have that information if you want it. But honestly, one of the best ways that I, I determine the quality of an herb is I look at it. it. Does it still have the right color? Like this still has that yellow and white color of chamomile that I would be looking for. I've gotten some lavender before that was very dull and not vibrant. I'm, I'm looking for a vibrant color that looks like the plant. If it's totally a different color or if it's dulled so much that you, you know, you're almost like, oh, I'm not even sure if this is what I bought, um, then it's probably not high quality. And then probably when you um, smell it and you know, kind of brush it between your fingers and smell it, you're probably not gonna um, smell that much either. So I want to show you some plantain. I, I got this the end of fall last year. And so you can see just how bright this is. I hope you can see. And see, I kept it in larger pieces inside. And I just break it down as I use it. This plantain still has a wonderful smell. Um, very green. <laughs> I don't know how else you say it. It's almost like hay or something. But it really has a fresh green scent. So I, I have the color, that vibrant color, totally dry, and that really nice scent still. 
So those are some things that you're looking for. And if you're talking about manufacturing, um, usually you want to receive something that has been packaged in the last two to three months. Now, if you ask most companies, they'll say, oh, the herbs stay good for you know, anywhere from one to three years. And that's, that's really vague, right? And I, like I said before, roots that are left in, in larger pieces or even mushrooms left in larger pieces, a bark left in larger pieces will last longer than even leaves left in, lar in larger pieces. Uh, so just be aware of that. And, and if you order something and a year later you find it behind, <laughs> hiding behind somewhere and you forgot you had it, and you're like, oh, I, I want to use this herb, open it up. Smell it. See how it's, you know, see how it's doing. Um, and, and that will really help you determine the quality at that point of the herb. If there's no smell, if, this, if it doesn't look right, if there's any mold, uh, anything like that, then that's something you should probably, well, no, you should definitely toss, especially if there's mold. And then, you know, then you can just put it on a compost pile or whatever to um, add some organic matter to that. So if you have any questions about the quality of an herb, let me know in the comments. And I'm going to try to go live more frequently here in um, my Huckleberry Mountains Botanical page. And if you are looking for free content, I'm actually going to add a PDF about the quality of an herb to my free herbal content. And if you're not signed up for that, go over to um, academy.huckleberrybotanicals.com. I'll put the link in the uh, comment section and sign up for my free content and you can download that PDF. Okay, until next time, health and joy.